Am I like looking okay? Because I don't, I feel like the camera's way up here. You can see what you look like right in that top left corner. You look fantastic, Janice. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Janice Rivera, and welcome to Woven. Woven, Women of Virtue and Excellence Networking Group, where we are woven together by our past experiences, our present skills and knowledge, so we can achieve our highest level of success in business, faith, and relationship. Now, what a success looks like is based on the five pillars, health, wealth, business, personal growth, and relationships with God and with others. So for those who are new to Woven, I want to mention a couple of things because a lot of I see a lot of new faces. First of all, people that are here, please, if you can sign in. Uh, we have a Facebook page and a group page. So please like or join the page, it's Woven San Diego, and that way you will be in the know of what's happening, as well as you'll be able to interact with all of our Woven ladies online, okay? The next thing will be to fill out a woven questionnaire. For those that are here, there's some printed out. If you join our group page, it will also be in the file section of the group. And the purpose is that we want, we want woven to be purposeful and meaningful to you. We all know that you're super busy. And for you to come back, you want to make sure I present meaningful content and speakers that will be engaging to you. So if you can please fill that out and email that back to me. The email is on the back of the card. Um, for those of you um, that are on Zoom, go in there. There's a fillable link and you can fill that out there. And then you can just email it back to me. Okay. So, perfect. So now we're going to get on to our icebreaker. So I want to get into our icebreaker. So as you guys all know, it was Valentine's Day. And as you can see, I'm wearing my pink, which is the color of love aside from red. Okay. So our icebreaker question is, I want you to say your name, what your business or career is, and what is your favorite Valentine's Day candy? Okay, so we'll start with the people in the room first. So I'll start here, let me just see your name. Um, Hi, I'm Marisa, and I'm a mom, but I do like a little side business with mommy, and my favorite Valentine's Day candy, um, I think it's just my favorite candy in general, it's like Reese's. But you know, Reese's hearts for Valentine's Day. <laughs> Very good. Hi, I'm Monica Morales. I'm studying to be a marriage and family therapist. And um, what? Yeah, <laughs> Valentine's oh, candy. Yeah. I really like Russell Stover. Oh, that's, a, that's old school. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. We'll start in the back and work we'll this way. Okay, so I'm Anna. Um, we own a business company. We do personal training, training. I'm Jasmine, we own the fitness company better. I actually do, uh, I also have a nutrition company and um, my favorite, I don't know, I just think dark chocolate. So Carl and my dad like chocolate ones too. Good. Danny? I'm Danny. Um, I'm a family specialist for Olive Crest, which is a foster and foster to adopt agency. And your favorite, my favorite chocolate. My favorite name is chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. It's all chocolate. My name is Moni. I'm originally from Brazil. I'm working at the mall as a retail. But also, I'm a coach, health wellness coach. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, you. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Hi, I'm Emily. Um, I run an interior design business and I'm studying for psychology. And my favorite chocolate is for Roche. Mm. Hi, my name is Andrea, and I do real estate as well as teaching. And I love chocolate. And German chocolate or European chocolate. Some of those. Kinder chocolate. Very good. Love it. Hey, everyone. I'm also in the estate of Paris and I do escrow. And um, I love dark chocolate too, but I think in touch on Valentine's Day for dark chocolate covered stuff. Oh, that's a big Yeah. <laughs> um, my name is Desiree. Um, my background is in education and psychology, 
Um, but I am a mom, new mom, and I do keto baking. Um, so that's my passion right now. And it's hard to tell because I make my own keto cakes, but I like chocolate or peanut cookies. Anything with mix. I'm good. Good. Awesome. Well, let's start with people on Zoom. So who wants to go next? Let's start with Candice. If you want to unmute. Hi, my name is Candace, and right now I'm, I'm in the Navy as doing medical administration right now. And my favorite candy is gummy bears right now. I just inhaled a whole bag during lunch today, so. <laughs> <laughs> and what was the third question? Oh, no, 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 no. You're doing what's your favorite candy? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's my favorite candy right now It's gummy bears. <laughs> okay. All right. How about Kim? Hello, I'm Kim Yader, Peak Performance Coach, and I get to support and partner with business owners, entrepreneurs, professionals, and leaders who've either hit a wall, they've gotten stuck, or they've simply plateaued, and we get to close that gap from where they are to where they want to be. So my favorite candy are those little cinnamon hearts that are spicy. They are so yummy. Spicy like you, I'm sure. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kim. Diane? Want to unmute Diane? Oh, there she is. Hi, Diane. Hi, everybody. So um, my name is Diane. I am a registered nurse. Um, and my favorite candy is, um, let me see, probably Reese's or Kit Kat bars. Very nice. Hope? Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Hope and I am a recreation therapist and my favorite candy is California Brittle from Seas Candy. Mm, nice. All right, Chris and Tara. Hey everyone, so um, we are Chris and Tara Borghese, The Marriage Revolution. We are creating a marriage revolution because we're gonna change the way that we're doing marriages and we really focus in on those Christian women who are feeling hopeless and frustrated in their marriages and you know what we do is we help them empower them to give them the skill set and the ability to actually take back their happiness take back their joy take back their marriages to create something magical and go back to the the whole thing is um, um, live their happily ever after Yes, and our favorite Valentine candy together. is together. We have the same one. <laughs> it's uh, those heart shaped Reese peanut butter cups. Mm, very good. Thank you, guys. And now I have, looks like Naomi, Naomi Flores. Hi, um, my name is Noemi, and I love um, milk chocolates. And I am currently a transaction coordinator and run um, Airbnb units for my house. And I'm on. Nice. And then last but not least, looks like, I don't know, hope I'm saying this right. Abby or AB? Abby? Hi, everyone. Sorry, I am, it's 11 o'clock where I am, so. <laughs> well, I appreciate I, uh, you staying up. I'm still like in my PJs, so, but. <laughs> I'm happy to be here. I, um, I'm a couples coach and I run a restaurant with my husband and my favorite candy is heart-shaped marshmallows. Oh, nice. Well, okay. Well, I'm Janice and my husband and I, we co-own a real estate mortgage company. I'll go into later about that. And my favorite candy is anything with caramel. Caramel, caramel whatever yes tomato tomato, tomato. <laughs> all right thank you guys for sharing so now let's dive into it so obviously it's valentine's day and based on the five pillars i chose relationships relationships in business as well as personal so my part today is going to be speaking on the business aspect and then i have chris and tara who are going to be sp speaking on the personal aspect so starting with the business so i spoke on this on one of my woven videos if you guys haven't seen it already about the importance of building a healthy relationship in business, okay? Now, we know there's the obvious things of what can be relationship builders, right? Practice empathy, build trust, right? Making time to connect, phone calls, 
maybe going one-on-one for coffees and lunches and networking, like events like this, right? Another important thing is you do what you say you will do. You take full responsibility and you honor your commitments. So those are pretty obvious things. But my focus today is gonna to be on the six relationship killers. So let me put this down. Okay. So number one, let me write this, is going to be making assumptions. Can you guys see this? Now I'll move it over. On Zoom. It is a new, but it's probably too small. It is. Okay, that's that's fine. It's going to be on one of the polls. Oh, okay. Okay, so making assumptions. So we all bring our own illusions into and out of every interaction. How often have you discovered weeks after meeting with somebody that you emerged with a completely different understanding than what you agreed to, okay? For example, you go to a client or business meeting and you come in without asking clarification and you start saying, sure, and you commit to things. And then once you commit to it, you realize this is not what you signed up for, right? Has that ever happened to you guys? I know it's happened to me. So when that happens, one of two things. Number one is you go back to your boss or your client and say, hey, sorry, I can't do that. Or you sit there and you go back to them and say, hey, I looked at the numbers and I need to renegotiate the deal or the price, right? Not the, great, not the best idea, not a good way to establish trust. Or you do number two, which what a lot of people do, they begrudgingly, reluctantly, follow through with it, but because they're not 100% emotionally invested, it starts showing in their customer service and in their product, okay? Both of these things, not good, okay? So number two is not listening. This is another relationship cover. Why is this not working? Not listening. Now this can be, or careless, like somebody's talking to you and you're staring off into space, you're thinking about what you're gonna do later, your date, the things you're gonna do with your kids, and then you miss something super important. But the worst can be when somebody gives you all the signs that they're listening, but instead of listening to understand, they're listening to respond, okay, or disagree. So this is more common when you're dealing with your relationships like your spouse is speaking to you or your kids and you're already in your mind thinking, how am I gonna respond back? And you're really missing the true point of what they're saying, okay? And this can also lead to misunderstanding, okay? Number three is imposing your solution. This is more common for people who are drivers, control freaks. I tend to be like that, okay? This is what happens is you create unilateral decisions without getting the feedback, okay, or input of your team or your client. Over time, people either stop listening or they stop giving their opinions or their input because you're just pretty much going to do what you want anyway. And so you miss out on opportunity for growth and for people to give value to your product or service. Okay, number four is avoiding honest feedback. I'm writing a swap, but usually it's a lot neater than this. I don't know why. Sorry. This is partnered with number three. But most of all, it's a fear of rejection. Most times, especially people who are control freaks, they don't like to be told what they're doing wrong, okay? And so based on that, if you're controlling, people won't feel comfortable to share their honest opinions with you. So if may, they may to your face agree, but as soon as you walk away, they're pretty much saying, forget it, I'm not gonna do it. So they end up doing their own thing, okay? And then you're wondering why things aren't moving forward. So when you're asking somebody for honest feedback, you need to be teachable, you need to be coachable, and you need to be humble, okay? And it actually allows people 
the environment to be vulnerable with you when something isn't working. So always when you leave a meeting, you always ask for feedback and you take it and you, even if you don't agree with it, but go home and sit on it and then think, you know, pray on it and think about, okay, is this, is this true or is this not true? Okay. Number five is, I just don't know where I left off here. Number five is failing to agree on a purpose or outcome up front. So meetings are a constant exact example of these hijackers. You go into a meeting, you present something to someone, to someone A. The other person thinks that you're talking about B, and then there's confusion on the purpose. This is why presenting your agenda, your vision, your goals is super important up front before you go into any meeting or whether you're doing speaking with a client or speaking with a colleague. Go in with the end goal result in mind. That way they know, and they can either A, be on board with it, or they can already present solutions or other feedback on it, okay? And then the final thing is failing to acknowledge the other person concerns. So this falls into the alignment of seeking to understand, not necessarily to agree. When you make people wrong, they dig in their heels and you automatically lose the deal. So if you are, what you do is if you agree, you restate their concerns, and then you acknowledge what you're doing is what you're acknowledging what they're saying. You can totally be right, but if you automatically go on the defensive with disagreement, people automatically will say no to you, okay? Because the other person doesn't feel like their feelings and their, uh, and their opinions and concerns are being heard. So my husband is a huge Grant Cardone. I don't know if any of you have heard of Grant Cardone. Mm -hmm. He's a very popular, he's kind of like right under Tony Robbins. And he's really popular for sales, but on the, on the concept of mindset. So I started listening to it because to help me learn people's mindsets. And he talks about the magic of agreement. And he talks about using agreement vocabulary. So when you go with somebody and they present with you a concern or an objection, you go with, you're right. I'm with you. I agree. I'll work it out. I understand. I'll make that happen. Done. Now, some people might think, well, that's manipulation, but it's not. It's understanding their reality. If you try to sell or negotiate in disagreement, you will lose the deal and you will lose an opportunity to grow. Okay? So you can do this with your clients, with your coworkers, with your spouse, with your kids. Okay? My husband has been doing this for me for a very long time. When I started listening to Grant Cardone, I told him like, stop Grant Cardone. <laughs> but it works because when he hears my concern, he doesn't automatically say, no, can't do that. So a good example of this is with your kids. Let's just say Johnny comes up to you. Now, obviously we're doing online Zooming, so, but it's not applicable, but just go with me. Let's say Johnny comes up to you and say, mom, I don't wanna go to school today. I hate school, it's boring. You say to them, Johnny, I totally agree with you. When I was growing up, I hated school. I hated school too. But I tell you what, why don't you put your shoes on, put your jacket on, put, let's go to school. And when you get out, we'll go for some ice cream and you get to tell me all about it. So there you go. You presented, you agree with them. You, pre, you presented a solution and you said the way. So that's pretty much the goal of that, okay? So, this is the poll that I have. Which of these relationship pillars are you most personally guilty of? 
I'm going to take a quick poll on that. So there should be a poll on there. You guys should be able to put in your comments. You guys see the poll? Yeah, I was able to do it. Okay, it's not showing up. It's yeah, in the chat. The poll and did it, but the, not the comments. Huh? It's not usually a give a. It's not working. No, that's okay. That's not. That's fine. Obviously, a glitch. So let's real quickly. Who wants to say number one? If you guys want to do a show of hands or raise your hand as number one is their number one issue. For me, that's one of them. I've got here in the room. Number one? Okay, number two? Is number two not listening? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's mine. Obviously, <laughs> you're not listening. <laughs> Okay, how about number three, imposing your, oh, imposing your solutions. Because why don't we love to do that? <laughs> okay, imposing your solution. Okay, number four is avoiding honest feedback. That one? Okay. All right. And number five, failing to agree on a purpose or outcome up front. Anybody here? Okay. And failing to acknowledge the other person's concerns. That's one of my one and number six are mine. <laughs> so awesome. So I have a challenge for you guys, okay? So my challenge is, and he actually, Grant Cardone told us to do this challenge, is to go home and for 24 hours, try to agree with everyone you come in contact with and see what happens. Now I tried this and I probably lasted half a day. <laughs> but as you do this more often, it becomes more it's a skill you end up learning and it becomes really useful with your clients with the people it is and actually my husband and i our fights and with our kids have gone down when we try it when because now that i understand it, i'm implementing this so it's made a huge difference in our home life as well how do you agree that still uh, seem authentic or um authentic or real Right. So, so you, say, don't, you don't have to say agree. Right, he gave right. everyone say, I hear you. I yeah. totally understand that's how you feel. Right. So like, yeah, it's like saying, like my husband's like, when I tell him like, I don't like that solution. He's like, I totally understand that you don't like that, but we're going to do it anyway. <laughs> yeah, I think what you said about, he, about her saying that she understands their reality. Yes. So it doesn't need to actually be that they're, they're not lying. lying. But it's like, they think that and that's their reality and it's okay. Yeah. I think that's what it was like to talk about. Yeah. Like, if they're reality, that's okay. Right. Once you give to the person, they answer because that's what they expect in terms of from you. They just relax and then you get out of the way. So, so I'm going to save the QA for the end, end because I want to save time for Tara, Chris, and Tara because they have some amazing content. So, real quickly, we're going to take a quick five minute break. And have you guys go use restrooms for you guys don't know the restroom is right out here. And uh, Desi Farias brought some Poquito trees, oh, keto friendly yes. trees. <laughs> so she's the owner of Poquito. Sorry guys, I'm sorry you want to miss that back there. And then Carly, she's our escrow uh, partner. She also brought some some treats as well. So oh, just like a bar. Yeah, it's all no and chocolates. I saw it was good. Okay, so guys, take a quick five minute break so we can bring on Chris and Tara. Okay, over there, they're in the room next door. So the we're on a five minute break.
Okay, can everybody hear me? Yes? Perfect. Okay, so I want to introduce our next guest speaker, Chris and Tara. And is it Borghese or Borghese? I always feel like I say your name wrong. Well, it's actually Borghese. Borghese. Well, that sounds very Italiano. Very good. Okay, Chris and Tara Borghese. And I just want to real quick give you a brief bio on them. So Chris and Tara are the co-founders of the Marriage Revolution and Academy. They've been married for 28 years and have helped numerous couples navigate through the jungle of conflict and misunderstandings by applying a practical and revolutionary personality mentoring curriculum. They are both certified marriage relationship and behavioral consultants. They have a mission and passion to help individuals and couples understand themselves and, and others, resulting in the freedom and transformation they desire and deserve in their relationships. So. All right, all yours. Wow, that is a great introduction. I love it. I think I would, uh, want to listen to them. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for uh, having us. It's an honor. Yeah. Thank you. We've known uh, Janice and uh, Fredo uh, for a little while now. But we were from Southern California, originally from Ohio. And uh, we, um, I know Fredo is a part of a group that I'm part of. So uh, that's the connection. And we're just thankful and honored to be part of your life and allowing us to speak at such a, it's a growing group. And uh, just by watching Janice, you guys are in the right place. I mean, she is a charismatic uh, lady who knows where she's going and she knows what she's talking about. And that's six, those six things that she gave, I don't know what you call them, the listening or the- Relationship killers. Relationship killers. That is gold right there. That's that's the price of admission just with that. We go, <laughs> hey, look, look, she took notes because oh. we're in this space, but we're always learning. Everyone's always learning. And so it's a really good honor to be here. Yes, for sure. Well, we have a PowerPoint presentation put together so that we stay on topic. And we'll let you know that um, if any of you guys ever done, and you can raise your hand, maybe in the chat, um, let us know if you've ever done the DISC personality assessment by raise of hands, or you can put in the chat. Okay, I see Kim has, I have. we can't see everybody, so. All right, can you guys see our screen now? Yes, we can. Okay. Hey, do you see that picture right there? That's Cancun, Mexico, we just got back. Nice. It's going to be an awesome we window. do a marriage retreat there so we'll yeah. talk about that as well yeah let me put this in presentation mode and we'll get started okay everyone okay can see and and um you see the screen the marriage revolution yep we can see okay. it awesome all right so um oh my gosh. is it not working it's not working but there we, we go but wait Oh, oh, wait, there's more. <laughs> you got to go back. One more. <laughs> okay. Right. So welcome, Woven Women. Thank you for allowing us to be here. Uh, we are Chris and Tara Borghese of the Marriage Revolution. And um, I wanted to say that understanding yourself and your spouse and adapting to their personality style is key to your endeavor as a business owner, wife and mom, and the basis for having healthy relationships. Now, we're going to stick this power presentation because I'm high eye on the disc profile. I like to just go with the flow, but <laughs> so you're going to learn more about that in this uh, in this meeting tonight. In fact, our mentor, Dr. Robert Rome, states it is unwise, foolish. Oh, this is powerful, frustrating, disrespectful, unloving, and unkind to try and connect with another personality style in a way that feels best to you rather than to them. Plus, and here's the kicker, it will not work. You're not gonna get the results. So thus, by the time we end tonight, you will have a good idea of how you and your spouse are wired so that you can have your spouse and family members support your career and business move and manage challenges and expectations and entrepreneurship. So um, I guess uh, Janice had asked you guys some questions that you would like answers to. And one of them, many of you are already entrepreneurs or maybe you're in a career and you'd like to transition into entrepreneurship. 
and the many challenges that that can you can face with um, the risk of that. Um, how do I get my spouse on board with doing something a little different than the norm? And um, what was the other question? The challenges. The challenges. So, um, so this is the so what of it. So did you want to talk about this? Yeah, one? so we all know that, um, you know, I'm very big on what, so what, you know, just get to the bottom line. What are the facts? I'm a high D, high I, high S. I'm all of it, really. <laughs> I got a lot of some C in me. But 1 Corinthians 9.22 says, when I am with those who are weak, I share their weaknesses, for I want to bring the weak to Christ. Yes, I try to find common ground with everyone, doing everything I can to save some. So here's the bottom line. Paul is actually trying to obviously win people to Jesus here in 1 Corinthians 9. For us, as business owners, we run a home, we have kids, we have spouses. We want to be able to relate to them in the best humanly possible so that there's less conflict, less angst, less anxiousness, less fighting, arguing. Anyone ever do that before? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, for, for real. <laughs> so the bottom line is that we want to be able to have the ability to understand ourselves and understand each other. It gives us the ability to be aware of that situation. And when we're aware of something, then we can be aware. <clears throat> because who knows at the end of the day, why this is so important is the fact that we marry people, you know, anyone here else married and understand that you've married a person? <laughs> people are the ones who actually buy our products and services. They whip out their credit card. They, they do whatever it takes to, to buy from us. It's people who live next to us. It's our families are made up of people. And we go to church with people. So at the end of the day, relationships are key. And being able to have fruitful relationships, ones where one where we can honor them, honor ourselves, honor God, that's what we want. Any skill set that allows us the ability to have good relationships is beneficial. Yeah. So one one um, it's it's a joke that goes around in the pastoral world. Um, we're both ordained pastors. Where people would say, "Well, how's your church going?" and they're like, "It'd be it's great, except for the people." <laughs> <laughs> and so we all know that it's different personalities. And so when we can understand that the different personalities that God created them all, and that we can actually start completing each other versus competing with each other, we can have a happy, successful life. So the Carnegie Foundation released a study revealing that 85% of a person's success in life is based on his or her ability to relate well with others. We must learn to relate, interact, and rely on others to fulfill our roles and purposes in life. So learning how to communicate effectively with your spouse is paramount to being able to have a marriage that not only survives, but thrives in a way both of you are fulfilled. And I love that it says both of you are fulfilled. So one of the things even um, in the listening to avoiding the honest feedback or imposing your solution, if you always have to be right and correct and the winner, then that means somebody's left being wrong and the loser. And that's never gonna work out to your advantage even if you deem yourself the winner. So somebody has to lose and this is why it's so important and I love what you shared, Janice, about um, going through and saying, you know, I agree with you or um, I understand how you're feeling because that's so important to people feel validated because the number one way that we can respect each other is by listening to each other. You know, oftentimes when we get married, we're told, you know, and actually it's in our vows. I, I'm, I'm committed to love you, honor you, cherish you respect. How, how do you do that, you know, in a practical way? And so listening to somebody, truly listening and having those skills actually is the utmost form of respect to that person. So keep that in mind also in your business and, um, and your families. Yeah. Through you. 
So the question is not, do we communicate? The question is, are we communicating effectively? The same goes for conflict. It's not if we experience conflict, it's when we have conflict. Right, so the ability to have conversations is what we're all about at the Marriage Revolution, because we know that it all starts, if you boil it down, you know how you, you look at, you analyze something and the why, the why, the why, at the end of the day, the foundation is being able to have honest conversations without um, feeling offended, without feeling like taking things personal, having the ability to have a conversation because we can't change a lot of the different things that happen to us, like run out of water, we don't have water, we don't have power, but what we can control is our ability to have a conversation without feeling the angst and anxious. And I think you would agree that and as we as we go through a business life in our in our personal life, being able to have those conversations without that anger, without that angst, without that, you know, nagging conflict would be beneficial to each of our hells for sure. Yes. So what we're going to show you, um, for those of you that have taken the DISC personality assessment, um, even if you haven't, it's okay. We're going to explain that a little bit here. And we're going to go through and explain the two different questions. You just have to ask yourself two questions. And then you're going to go into the breakout sessions. So you guys get, get to know each other a little better. And then you're going to answer the same questions for your significant other, your spouse, your boyfriend, whatever you may have. And that way, then we're going to come back in and we're going to give you specific strategies on how you can diffuse conflict and how you can relate and what might be the source if you are having some conflict, getting to the root of what, what's causing it. That's so right. this is the question number yeah. one. So the DISC um, model of human behavior is very simple. It's based on two questions. The first question, am I more outgoing or am I re more reserved? Now you may be thinking, well, I don't know. Sometimes I'm a little bit of both. Well, just choose one that you are most, there's one of these that you're most attracted to or resonated with, that you resonate with most. And, but here are some words to help you decide between being outgoing or reserved. If you're outgoing, you're fast paced. As you can tell, this is me. I'm involved, energetic, optimistic, positive, enthusiastic. My focus is on talking things out. That's someone who's outgoing. Someone who's more reserved is slower paced. If you go down to the bottom here, slower paced, cautious, concerned. They're more, a little bit more reluctant. They have a, little, a lot of critical thinking skills that they want to be able to think about. They wanna discern things. So on those types of situations, that person is more reserved. Let me give you a, a real life scenario. As you can tell, I'm very, I'm very fast paced. I'm very energetic. I'm very involved. I get up at four in the morning. Tara gets up at 6.30 or seven. If I come at her with, hey, here's what we gotta do. If I come at her with all my energy and all the optimism, all my positive, mm -hmm. I'm gonna run her over. So what do I do? I'm doing with you what I do with her. I'm slowing down, I'm slower paced. I'm being more cautious. I'm being more concerned. As in, I ask her, how did she sleep? You know, did she have any dreams, any visions? I ask her that every day, right? So the difference here, if we go to the bottom of page four here, or this slide, outgoing people tend to speak with high levels of energy even their gestures and facial expressions have more passion than more reserved individuals have. Reserved people tend to speak more quietly, less forcefully. Their gestures and facial expressions seem more guarded than the expressions of outgoing individuals. So here's a big note. 10 to 20% of all challenges occur over this issue. More, most are simply irritations which can easily be resolved. So any questions about the first question? I am going, am I more outgoing or am I more reserved? We're gonna do a breakout session, right? For that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah there's gonna be a breakout session. Okay, so I'm not sure breakout right now in the rooms and I want you guys no, to- No, not yet. I'm gonna have the second okay, question. Okay, one more. 
one, one more, more question. slide and then we'll do the breakout. Yeah. You want me to do this one? Yeah, that'd be good. Okay, so the second question to ask yourself is, am I more task oriented or people oriented? So the task oriented people tend to focus more on the job to be done or the goal to be accomplished. They seem to be less influenced by the opinions of others. They are more logic based in their approach. People oriented individuals tend to enjoy the company of others and seem to focus on people as being the priority rather than the project at hand. They seem to be more influenced by the opinions of others and more sensitive or emotional and less fact-based. So 80 to 90% of all challenges occur over this issue. Most are major conflicts, which cannot be easily resolved, but they can be resolved. So that's a pretty big number, 80 to 90%, if you're task-oriented or people-oriented. So how do you know if you're task-oriented? Um, you're about procedure, function, programs, plans, projects, and processes. Your focus is on getting things done. If you're people oriented, you'll tend to be more about relationships, caring, sharing, emotions, feelings, and friendships. Focus is on the opinions of others and how, other, how others feel. Now there are no right or wrong answers, okay? So just, be, just say, well, I wish I was more people oriented, but I think I'm more task oriented. Or I wish I was more task oriented. I think I'm more people oriented. There is no right or wrong answer to either of these questions. It's just, it's who you are. God has made us. If you know, we need the task oriented people to get things done, but we need the people oriented people to get, you know, people feel good about what they did. So there, everybody is valid. So either way, just ask, ask yourself those two questions. And then when you get in your breakout session, you're going to go over, um, write that down, what you think you are, and then your spouse. And we'll put it together for you so you can identify, quickly identify where you, are you a D, are you an I, are you an S or a C? And we'll explain that. So, so Janice, um, the next page here is the breakout session. So if you want to coordinate that there. Yeah, we'll do that. And, um, and we'll okay, we'll give about one, three, two, three. Um, how many people do we have in breakout eight? We have eight, why don't you split in two, split two rooms. We'll do four and four. Okay, you guys wanna, you guys wanna talk, we'll put this on mute here. All right, you all should receive a
you guys hear me back? And Zoom? They're still coming. Hi, Morris. I see you finally came on. So give them 30 to 40 seconds. All right. Morris and Tara, are you guys back? Can we close that window? Can we close that window? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I love it. I like the final thoughts. Gotcha. See? I learned something. I'm so glad you guys are doing it because I'm like so. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, are we all back? Yes, we're all back. Well, I hope you're a little sideways. <laughs> what, happened? what happened there? Okay. <laughs> Did each of you write down uh, what you thought the two the answers to your questions for yourself and your significant other? You know, again, the questions were, are you fast paced or outgoing? The second question was, are you people oriented or are you task oriented? And so, if you can, um, if you can make sure you write those down because it's all going to make sense to you here in just a second. I'm going to share my screen, and we are going to. Um, where do you go? You had it. I had it. Yeah. Where? Oh, okay. Okay, so um, let me go to this screen here. <laughs> okay, okay, can everyone see this? See this? Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. So this really is the DISC model of human behavior. And, you know, there are lots of things out there, information that you can, that you can gain. And, you know, you can go Google things and, and all of that, but it's being able to apply it, which is what Chris and Tara are big on because I did this at, at work and I just didn't have the skill set to apply it. I knew the information, but I didn't have the skill set. So, so I don't know which one of you. Um, well, let me first describe each one. So, if you're a D, it's your outgoing and your task oriented. Did anyone? Um, that was you, Kim. Kim. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> outgoing and task oriented. Great. The well, actually, hang on. I'm so wrong. I, I actually was thinking you were looking at the. Yeah, I am outgoing and task oriented. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So that's a D. And these are the words that would that we would use to describe someone like yourself or others in the room. Someone who's dominant, someone who's direct, demanding, decisive, determined, and that they're a doer. They get things done. They like results. Yes. Right. Now yes. I gotta re remind everyone that there's no right or wrong answer. It, there's no right or wrong D or I or S or C. They all have value, they all have purpose, and they're all worthy of greatness. It's just how you're wired. We like to say the Bible tells us who we are positionally, like, like we're sons and daughters of the king, but this uh, tells you how you're fearfully and wonderfully made in mm. Psalm 139. And without this knowledge, Chris and Tara would not exist. We just would not be here today. And this has been the life changer for us because now it helped me become more self-aware and when I become more self-aware, then I can understand myself and Tara better, and then I can adapt my communication. So with that being said, we understand the D is outgoing and task. The I is outgoing and people oriented. Um, this is where I tend to, to be. This is where my highest score um, lies. I'm more outgoing and more people oriented. Is there anyone here in the group that is like that, either online or uh, there personally? <clears throat> I, I got okay. that too. Okay. Because okay. we can't see everybody. So if you have your hand yeah. raised, sorry, we can't call out your name. <laughs> yeah. So that with this, with this, this is just giving you a high overview of what the disc actually is. But when we put people through the full assessment, it prints out a 36 page document that tells you your blend. So you are a blend of all four of these. It's just one is your dominant, and then you usually have one or two others that are that support your dominant trait. So just for you know time's sake, uh, we'll go through and find out you know which one is your dominant and tell you a little bit about that. So like Chris was saying, I is inspiring, influencing, impressionable, interactive, impressive, interesting. So the eyes are like the um, 
uh, Steven Tyler's, the, the people who are out there performing, the people who color their hair purple and pink, and, you know, they're wearing red shoes and purple shoes, and, and you know, they're your entertainers. Your Ds are like your business owners, your Steve Jobs, your, um, the people who do great things, Elon Musk, um, the people that are the doers, that make the world go around. And then you have, um, then the next on the list is the S's. The S's are reserved and people oriented and they're characterized by being very supportive, steady, stable, sensitive, status quo, shy. So these again, the folks are those who are reserved and people. And then your C's are reserved, but yet they like to get things done, task oriented. Now remember, we're a blend of all four. We have all four, we're just a blend of one is dominant, one is, and you may have one or two that's secondary. And a C is, calcular, is uh, characterized by being cautious, by being calculating, competent, conscientious, contemplative, and careful. Now where Chris and Tara, I, I am right here in the I. Tara, her highest is a C, which is more cautious. We are exact polar opposites. And this is why we are destined to be together and why it works. <laughs> Because, yes. because we're learning how to complete and not compete. So many of the couples we talk to, they're in the phase of competing. They don't understand the differences. They don't understand how to relate, how to talk, how to listen, how what you know decisions like how do you spend money, how do you communicate, and that's what we go through at the marriage revolution. Yeah. So the supporting person would probably fall into your teachers, nurses. Um, you know, elderly care, those are your um, S personalities, maybe uh, somebody who um, cleans houses, something like that. So then your C's are going to be anybody who does as a CPA is going to be a high C because you have to be calculate, calculating, you have to be right, you have to be concise. And so almost every accountant and CPA is going to be a very high C. Yep. Next page. Okay, so some of the questions that um, we want to relate this to so we can actually give you gold for this is that your personality determines the following. And each of the respective um, personality traits have specific questions that they like to ask. Like a D, what are you doing, right? A D, if you, if you fell into the D category, you like to know the what, what's going on here? Get to the bottom line. What are we doing? And I want to know right now, right? And so with a with a boss that is a D, they don't want the stories, right? A, a, a spouse doesn't want the stories, at least not yet. They just want to know the bottom line. Like for me, I want to know, did it turn out right? And then Tara can tell me the story because I'm also a high D. And I likes to know, hey, who else is doing it? Like who else is gonna be there? Like who's going to Cancun? I wanna know because if they're fun people and I like them, which I like everyone, I want everyone to be there. So that's what an I likes to, to know is who else is doing it. And then the S's is how are we doing it? How are we doing it? Because they're people oriented. And then the C's are why are we doing it? Why, they need to know the why. So if you have these people in your life and they, they ask you these questions, you know, what, why this is so important is that you don't get offended if they're asking you because an S personality can tend to kind of withdraw and step back if a D is saying, you know, what are you doing? What, you know, what are you thinking? Why, you know, what, what, what? And so they're going to maybe get a little step, step back a couple steps and be like, wow, they're like, they're challenging me. And so that's not the case if you understand the personality. So it, it does you know, kind of quell a lot of the arguments and conflict that can come up between the different personalities. Yeah, knowing that, understanding the questions that they're asking will help you be able to relate to them. If you can look at those uh, descriptive words and be able to kind of signify where they, where they are because you'll also be able to not only see what they're doing but also by the questions that they're asking you'll be able to tell where they fall. The second thing that we, um, when you're talking to your spouse, um, trying to get buy-in, when you are looking for a career move, you're 
you're switching from being a, a corporate America to an entrepreneur or vice versa. The second thing you want to understand, besides the question that you ask and the question that they ask, is what motivates you and your spouse. A D, someone who is dominant, wants a challenge. That's what motivates them. So, and at the very end of this, we'll get to a, a, an actual real life case study and uh, give some examples of people who were making transitions and, and um, they wanted their spouse to, to go with them and they didn't have these conversations until it was too late. <laughs> and Tara will tell you about those. And I is motivated by recognition. Like they wanna know they're doing a good job. They wanna know that um, they're, they're doing it right and that they're liked. So that's an I is recognition. And then the S is motivated by security. So, you know, this, this is really important if you're transitioning to, you know, an entrepreneur where there's not as many guarantees. You're not going from that guaranteed paycheck every two weeks. And so, it, so if you know, if your spouse is an S, their risk tolerance is not going to be super high because they're motivated by security. They want security and stability. So knowing that going in about your spouse and even about yourself, if you're saying, you know what? Should I take this leap? Should I make this step? You know, do I have what it takes or is this gonna cause me a lot of stress in my life? And so knowing this about yourself and your spouse will um, help you be able to plan ahead accordingly and be yeah. able to lay the foundation and saying, yeah, for the, maybe, maybe you just save up a few more months. You know, maybe you say, well, listen, I know this is gonna be a little scary, but I've got six months, eight months, a year, you know, we can live until this takes off. So that way you feel a little better, they feel a little better. And so you're not gonna have this constant um, anxiety over the security. And then the C wants quality answers. So that's one of the things is do your research, come with facts, come with figures and say, okay, I'm gonna do this, this position, but listen, if I sell you know, one home a week or one home a month, if this is what you're going into, just for an example, you know, that's going to make fifteen, twenty thousand dollars If we do X, Y, and Z, this is the average. Like that's coming with quality answers and data. And they're going to really appreciate that. Yeah, I'm going to give just a real quick illustration. And Tara's got two examples of couples we work with who have this exact scenario. And I wish they would have talked this before. <laughs> They're like, when I want to do something with Tara at the marriage revolution, I come to her because I know she's a high C. I don't because I don't want the conflict. I don't want the angst. I don't want to get, you know, all our feathers all ruffled up. I come to her with details. I come to her with quality answers. I come to her with facts and spreadsheets because I know how she's wired. <laughs> and so she knows how I'm wired, which is an I. So it's not that I don't have any C in me. It's the fact that I need to take the good of the C because I know that's what's going to help this conversation go well because I'm laying the foundation. I understand my spouse. I understand myself. And when that happens, that's when you can have healthy conversations rather than conflict. Yeah. We you wanna talk one. about the couples that we- Oh, here? Um, yeah. We'll go to the next one, I think the next slide. So in this one, this is, um, well, your personality determines the following. Responds best to a leader who, so a D will, will, will respond better to a leader who provides direct answers. An I is a democratic leader and friend. An S is relaxed and amiable. And a C provides reassurance with facts. So this, this is the personality traits that responds best to a leader who has these. So oftentimes, if you ever had a position or a leader in your life where you're like, man, I, I've got along so well with that one. But this one over here, you know, they say people don't leave companies, they leave bosses. And so this is the leader. And as you guys are leaders of your family, you're leaders of your business, you're leaders in the community, um, you know, knowing this information will only help you uh, be able to expand your reach, expand your influence, because you have, you'll always have people under you whether you're, whether you're the boss or not, you're always leading somebody. If it, obviously you're always leading yourself, but you're, you're, you're leading your children. And so you need to know 
as a leader, you know, these people are going to respond to you better when you're leading your children. Uh, I think Janice even talked about that, providing direct answers. If you have a D child, you need to provide direct answers to them. And so these, these are just some of the things you can do. Now, one of the stories that Chris is talking about is obviously a lot of couples, I know Janice and Fredo, they work together. And that can be a little dicey when you're coming together because not only are you trying to have a real marriage relationship with them, but you're also trying to have a work relationship with them. So that's a whole nother dynamic. But what we often see is the person who is, is going to go off and, and start their own thing and do their own thing as an entrepreneur. So a lot of these men are high D's. So a lot of their wives are not high D's, they're S's. And like I said before, the S's, they want security and stability. So the one, the couple that he's referring to, uh, she came home, she was a nurse, loved her job, loved her position, but he wanted her to work with him because he loved her and he wanted to spend more time with her. But when she came over and she quit her job, things were not going well because there was no safety and security in what they were doing. It was very unpredictable. So it was causing them, they almost lost their marriage because of this. So Is then they- my marriage, Tara? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the name's withheld to protect the innocent, right? No. <laughs> well, you weren't a nurse. And uh, so, um, so yeah, but you can see this actually almost happened to us as well because we started working together. And so we had to navigate this whole thing and whose roles and responsibilities. And, you know, he was used to managing people. So he was trying to manage me and I was kind of like, Hey, I don't want you to manage me. So it took us a couple of years to really get in the groove and understand this. And as obviously the whole personality, like he said, this really saved our marriage. I don't know how I've even done relationships without knowing this information. I, I don't know how anybody does it because Obviously with the divorce rate, you know, over 50%, um, they're not doing it very well. They're just yeah. not because there's so much conflict going on. So, And the word I want to use um, is respect. When you can come to the table with knowing this information and applying it and talk to them in their frequency. Now I'm going to date myself. You know, the frequency like a radio dial back in the day, you would go, whoo. And then when you hit the actual uh, radio signal, you would actually hear something. Well, what's happening to a lot of couples is that they're not on the same frequency. It's in a woo 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 type of situation. And when you can talk to someone in their frequency, you will gain their respect. And then you will be able to lay a foundation of doing things that you want to do with that boss or with that husband or with that child, because now they respect you because you have now understood them mm -hmm. and heard them in a way that will gain their respect um, without a doubt. Okay, so the second question, I think some of the challenges and expectations that we, um, we wanted to address is... Um, yeah, I kind of touched yeah, on this a little bit yeah, about yeah. your risk tolerance and reducing negative confrontation. Um, D is the high risk taker, the go for it attitude. These are your um, extreme sports person. They'll, they're ready to just do anything, jump in and, and go for it and not really um, calculate the risk per se, because they're like, well, whatever, I'm going to be fine. Like you only have one life, right? Live it and go for it. So that's the high risk taker. And that's most of the entrepreneur world um, is it falls into this. Now, the eyes are also high risk takers, but they're kind of one of their things is, is sometimes they can be a little too optimistic. Like, hey, I'm gonna have this meeting and 500 people are gonna show up and only you know five people show up. But they're very optimistic and they're great and fun to be around, but they're high risk takers. And then you have your low risk takers, that, that these are the S's, they don't like change. Like I said, they like their safety, they like stability, they like security. And then you have your cautious risk taker. They want a detailed plans with facts and figures. So there's just more a calculated risk. So this is really important um, from what we understand if you are thinking of doing something on your own and leaving something that's predictable 
you know, to asking yourself these questions, you know, where do I fall in here as far as my risk? So that way I know how to act accordingly and I know how to, you know, explain this to my spouse to say, hey, listen, I've done all the calculations. Here's how I see how this could work out. If your spouse happens to be a C, um, you know, the high risk taker, the, uh, the high, the D spouse might say, hey, listen, let's go for it. I think you're, this is awesome. How can I help? That's right. And so you can lay a great foundation if you know this information, because you want to have that good, a good conversation with someone knowing them. And when you know them, then you can talk in their frequency and then it's going to reduce the angst, reduce the, um, the, uh, the conflict because you've taken the time to say and thought, like maybe on the way home from work or wherever and thought, okay, now how do I have this conversation with Steve? You know, Steve is, I think he's an I or he's an S or a C and then you plan accordingly. When you have conversations that you can have in your head and knowing how they're wired and using words that will motivate them with the proper risk tolerance, then that conversation is going to go a lot healthier than, hey, I want to come out. And you, I, like me, if I didn't know Tara, I'd come home and, and be optimistic and I'd say, hey, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. And she'd be like, whoa. And then all of a sudden we're fighting, right? It's like, no. But if I took the time, get under control, had conversations in my head about how this is going to go and use the proper words, then that conversation is going to go a lot healthier. And that's what we all want, right? <laughs> Healthy conversations. Healthy conversations. So this is basically uh, it. Let's let's uh, let's open it up to questions and answers before we get into all of this, because um, we wanted to leave oh, yeah, a, lot, a lot, a good amount of time for that. I don't know, Janice, how much time we have left. Uh, we got a couple more minutes. We have a couple minutes for Q and A. So. Thanks again, you guys. I appreciate all that feedback. I mean, one of the things I liked that you said was complete, not compete. And Tara, that story was me and my husband. I, I am a registered I'm a CR. Oh, you are? Yes, I am. <laughs> oh my gosh. My husband. Yeah, that wasn't you too. <laughs> yeah, so that story, I think, honestly, my husband reached out to you. <laughs> that's because how you guys, we were in crisis. And I think that's that's probably one of your stories, but we worked together. This is before we came to Christ and it almost ruined our marriage because mm -hmm. we just didn't know wow. we kept competing and not completing. And I took a step back and got out of the business with him because I just rather just not deal with it. Oh, that's and, good. But now we've shifted through a lot of things, obviously through Jesus, through learning how to communicate properly, knowing our styles that, um, you know, it really shifted, you know, we're in, we're a team now. And yeah. so, yeah. And knowing our boundaries, knowing our lanes. Too. That, is, that is awesome. Yeah. That's important. Yeah, you know, well, I was a leader in the church pastoring or whatever. And, and I come home and we weren't getting along. It's like, we sat in the front pew and <laughs> taught and all that stuff. And I'm like, something's wrong here. It was, it was awful. So what other questions do we have? Anybody else have a question? Carly has a question. So how do you know how far to change your frequency still being, or still being authentic and true yourself? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so yeah. one of the, one of the things is um, one of the, here's an, here's a perfect example. Um, well, one of the things is listening. So that's, that's, that's really, really key is listening to what they're saying. So um, one good example is when somebody is an I, they tend to be very, very passionate, right? They might talk really loud and be really like in your face type of that type of excitement. And so one of the things that the person could say to that person is to say, wow, you're, you seem so passionate about what you're talking about versus them saying to them, hey, you need to calm down. You're out of control. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because, because that, yeah, that will shut down conversation faster than anything. And, and then also remember that you married that person because you, who they were individually. And one of the things is, is what we, what we always, um, go back to is, you know, we're all made in God's image, but for some reason, when we get married, we want to make that person into our image. I can, I can tell you why, because we think that this will resolve conflict. Like if that person, if Tara can just be more like me, well then 
and think like me and be like me, well, then we won't have conflict. Well, that's not how it works because we want her individual. This is why God brought us together. We're exact opposites. So it wasn't really the fact that we want to change each other because who all knows that doesn't work, right? We need to understand each other. And until we got this, this tool, it was hard. I mean, we had to buckle up our bootstraps and, and say, you know what, we're going to be committed to each other. Sure, we'll get married. But it was like, I'm going to travel and I'm going to have, I'm going to do my thing and you're going to do your thing. And it wasn't really, it really wasn't healthy. Yeah. Until we could understand our differences, we couldn't appreciate our differences. And so that was the big thing. But, but I think what you're asking is how do you adapt without losing yourself? Yeah. And, and that's where the conversation, that's when we teach couples how to actually have those conversations to where you can get to the root of what's actually going on to talk about it. Because oftentimes we don't want to talk about it because we know it's going to end up in a fight. And so we, we, don't, we don't talk about it. We avoid it. And so foundationally, uh, remembering that there's maybe not always just one right way to get there. Um, one of the things that in our neighborhood, there's, multi, there's only two ways out of this neighborhood that we live in right now. And we live in the very back of the neighborhood. And every time we would leave, I want to go left. And he always wants to turn right. And, he, and so we've just resolved, listen, we're both right. Yeah. You know, I'm going to get out of this neighborhood going left and he's going to get out going right. And that's so right. I have to argue with him about it. That's what, that's how he wants to do it. And that's fine. And I can be okay with that. It's not my way. I don't have to change him over to my way. He doesn't yeah. have to change me over to his way and argue each other. Um, so, but that is a, that is a very good question. And, and that is so important to not lose yourself in compromise. I have a question. Yeah. Yeah, it can be loud. Just be well, loud. In one of the in one of the slides, slides it says that what how does like the, how does a partner respond to like relationships or something? And like for D, it was response that's a challenge or something. Oh, okay. Yeah, let me. Uh, so I was trying to. What motivates you? Uh, that like, like, what do you mean by motivated by challenge? Like they like, like they like a challenge. Like, can you be more specific about that and the example? Like, does that mean that the personality is like never like too close, like always chasing them? Or like, what does that mean? Oh, yeah. So what that means is that that personality has to always be conquering something. Like, for instance, if at work, like if they create, if they get a project done, they're already on to the next project. That's what that means. They want to be challenged. They want to try, they want to go to the next level. So think like an extreme sports um, athlete, you know, they jump the 10 foot hill, but the next time the 10 foot hill isn't going to have the thrill anymore. They need the 12 foot th the hill and they need, and so they, they need to be always challenging and bettering themselves yeah. to be able to feel because they need to be getting results. And if they're not getting the results, it can be working out. It's just, if, if you get bored, you need to set something up in front of you and know that your personality, you need to be always working towards something or you're going to become complacent and then you're not going to be fueled. You know, you're going to have your tank full. And so, yeah, you're going to have much more uh, a healthier conversation. If you word, if you use words that, that help them understand there's a challenge in front of us, right? So if you're coming, if your husband's a high D in the situation and you want to come home from corporate America to do some, something entrepreneurial, the challenge would be, hey, we're, we're going to have to make money by, you know, in this endeavor by three months, you know, whatever. That challenge is going to excite him, right? Whereas if your husband's a, an S in that situation, security, well, then, then you're going to want to put a plan. You may not want to quit your job until you know you can transition into the other job with money, right? That'll help that conversation go a lot better in your life. Yeah. It will reduce the stress because now you're, you're understanding they like safety and security and you're doing and saying things that really help that environment um, succeed. We have time for one last question. Anybody on Zoom? Want to ask me a question? I really want to read the person that I've got saved from it. Hmm? Oh, Kim, you yes. have her hand up. I'm going to put it on the, I'm going to put the link on the face group. Yeah. Okay, I have a question. So I 
So I, my husband and I are opposites, but there's sometimes that he, he's kind of a high D like, you know, he's, he's in a sales job, but he's not necessarily the salesperson, like that peacock personality, but the, it's like, there's such a competitiveness in the relationship and the communication, you know, it's like, so I can see sometimes how we both want to win and we both want to be heard. And, um, so part of me is like, gosh, is he kind of a D? Are we both D's? What do you do if, if there's two D's? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good like, question. That's like well, double trouble. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's one is understanding that. I mean, like I like to say is that when you become aware of something, you can become beware. You can mm -hmm. beware of it. So if you know that you're both D's, then obviously someone is going to have to um, not, I want to use the word submit, but fall in line with someone else's ideas. Like, for example, I know that, um, you know, like in doing finances, right? If we know that who is better at that, if you're both are D's, who is really better at finances? Who likes, who enjoys that more? Well, the person that wants to do it more does that. The other person says, you know what? This is a battle not worth fighting. This is where your, your strength, your abilities is going to be good. Then I'm going to do it. Now, conversely, that same couple who are both these, maybe yours is doing the dishes or his is doing the dishes, then, well, by all means, do them. You do them. And then, uh, and so as long as you know mm -hmm. what you like, and yeah. as long as you know how you're wired, then it's a conversation to say, you know what? So we don't have this butting ahead and we don't have this conflict. We're going to go by what our strengths are, what our secondary is. Like for me, my primary is I, but my secondary is a D and an S. And so we have to have those conversations to say, okay, what is Chris good at? What is Tara's good at? What is Chris like? What is Tara like? If there's a certain situation where we both are in the same um, personality trait, we have to have that conversation and just work it out so that it's amiable mm -hmm. for each um, or we adapt for each couple. That is so good. So he can have the finances for sure. And <laughs> that is great, bring that up. But we're actually in um, dance lessons right now. So once a week at our home. And it, is, it has been so amazing because the dance instructor is like marriage therapy. You know, he gave us a picture. He said, Kim, Rick wants to draw the lines. You get to splash it with the paint. I was oh. like, oh, okay. He can draw the lines. That's awesome. That's the D and the I, really. I see you as an I for sure. Um, and so that, that what he said is really amazing. And that's knowing where your roles and responsibilities are. And taking and having a plan and a path forward and saying, okay, let's agree on the goal we're trying to hit. And then who's, how are we going to get there? So what's your vision? What's your mission in your marriage and your goals for your business? And then who's going to do what to get there? Mm -hmm. So, you know, competing is never going to work. Mm -hmm. So you just have to, it's going to have to be situation by situation where you say, all right, you know what? You get to choose on this one and I'm going to honor whatever your decision is. That's and whether, whether they fail or don't, you know, obviously, you know, the whole thing is um, love never fails. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing it out of honor, you can't fail. Even if it may look like it's failing, you don't fail because God doesn't, he's, he's always going to turn everything to our good. That's what he says mm -hmm. in his word that he causes all things to work together for our good. Amen. So you can, you can have that trust in your mm -hmm. spouse and give them the freedom to make a decision, whether regardless of the outcome. Because you know God's got gotcha. you. However, what I would add to that, if they're going to make that decision, it has to be communicated. Expectations that someone's going to own that that person owns it. Right, right. Like they have to own it, and if they do, if they can't own it or whatever, there's something, then they have to have a conversation to say, "Hey, look, I can do this part, but I can't do that part very well. Can you do that part?" So, it's it's uh, healthy communication is really. Yeah. It's, it's an art. It's we're gonna have, an art. We're going to have to take uh, dance lessons now. That sounds awesome. <laughs> well, listen, guys, we want it. We need to wrap up because we still have one more thing to quickly do. But thank you again so much for all that insight. And there's the info up there. Um, follow their Facebook group, The Marriage Revolution. It's amazing. Like my husband and I, we've, we've got a lot of their content from that. And that's how we reached out to them for this event. 
So again, thank you guys so much. I appreciate that. And I'll be posting the DISC link on the Facebook group. So if you guys want to take your own DISC assessment and have your significant other take it, there's a link. I'll post it on there. Okay? Very Absolutely. Good. Well, All thank right. you for your time. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Thank okay. you. Yeah, thank you. All right. So we got one last thing, and I want to try to get you guys out of here on time, which is, oops. My kids are great. My phone, my thing locked up. Sure. Did you get me on? Am I on? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So the next thing that I'm going to have you guys do when we meet, it's called weaving your story. Okay. And that's pretty much selling your story. So obviously we talk about business and I'm going to have you guys practice giving your value to people when you interact with them. Okay. Whether you're a salesman or not, you're constantly selling yourself. You sell yourself to your spouse. You sell yourself to the kids. You're selling yourself to the people you meet. So you don't have to technically be in sales to give your value to people. All right. And we have to be able to identify besides saying I'm a real estate agent or I work for Mary Kay or I sell Arbonne, you know, that there's a lot of people that sell Arbonne that do real estate. What's your value? So I'm going to put myself on the limb and share my weaving my story. And I use weave because it's pretty much the kickoff for a woven. But once a month, I'm going to pick somebody to do this and be vulnerable. And we're going to give feedback. So here we go. And, I, and the key is you time yourself. Your goal is to keep it under three minutes. All right. So I'm going to time it. Make sure I stick with us. All right. Here's my timer. Here it is. Okay. There we go. All right. Hi there. I'm Janice, and I work with buyers and sellers in the coastal and surrounding areas of San Diego. Now, I have um, I help them live the dream of home ownership in one of the best vacation spots in the country. I've been a realtor for over seven years and I'm a co-owner with my husband in a thriving real estate and mortgage business here in Pacific Beach. We have helped many families over the years, but one of the best compliments I've received from my clients is that I gave five-star customer service experience, that I exceeded their expectations, and that I made the buying process easy and fun. Now, with this market, it's very hard to do that. So getting a review like that makes me very proud and it drives everything I do. So my mission is, is education. It's knowing what's happening in my community and in the market, because I wanna be the best advisor to the clients that I serve. I want people to know that when they buy a house, it's more than just a place to live, but an investment into their future. Now, Besides buying and selling, besides helping people with real estate, I, you will find me at the beach with my husband where we live. So if you follow me on Facebook, you see I love to post lots of sunset pics. So I'm very passionate about that. I also help serve at our group at, a, at our church, Awaken. And I'm also very passionate about empowering women just like yourselves, thriving in their faith, life, and business. And that group is called Woman. Thank you. That, that was a minute and 45 seconds. This is wow. the second. So, so that was a minute and 45 seconds. So the goal is to keep it under three minutes because if you're talking too long and wandering off, it kind of tunes people out. Now, obviously you're not going to say that to every person you meet, like when you meet them for the first time, but the goal is when people say, Hey, what do you do? You start off with your value. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now people, this is the thing, like when you, you know, like our culture is more like, hey, what can you do for me? Okay. It should, and whereas in reality, what we learn from our faith is, hey, what can I do for you? What makes you unique? What makes you stand out? What else do you like to do? This is something you creating this and practicing it over and over. Now, this is my second time, so I know I fumbled a little bit, but um, practicing it over and over is going to become more natural and you'll be able to share it with people and they'll be able to engage with you. Because if you share what your value, what you're passionate about, what's your big why for people, that's what's going to keep them engaged. Because most of the time when people want to do business with you, it's not because of the product, it's because of you. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can use this for your Facebook page. If some of you haven't known already, I started a new lifestyle community page called San Diego Beach Lifestyle. 
And I created that because I'm very passionate about living in San Diego. So if I'm going to still keep on living the dream here, I have to show what the dream looks like. Okay, so next month I will be picking somebody to do this. So um, you can either volunteer or I will pick you to do this. <laughs> okay, so with that being said, now I'd like some feedback. Anybody want to share? I'm good. I feel like you went into like a little bit too much of specifics about location and stuff like that. You were like coastline and then you said Pacific Beach, and I think that that might have went a little bit too detailed. Okay. Um, but that was just my own, own opinion. I just noticed like here the destination, like the location in such a short span of time. Okay. That was just what they had kind of like, yeah, that was just where I was at. Okay. So she, you suggested I should just said that in San Diego? Because San yeah. Diego's pretty big. Yeah. Or, I mean, I mean, you said you looked at the beach and you knew that that, you know, it was safe to do. I mean, it's such a Okay. That's no, just, thank you. I appreciate that. Anybody else? Janice. Well, I, I love it. Yeah. Hello, it's Cam. Hi, Cam. I am the D. <laughs> so, um, I love, you know, I loved the energy towards the end. So my experience of you was a connectedness, a relatability at the end. I'd like to see that energy in the beginning so that we feel connected with you at the beginning. Yeah, I was a little nervous in the beginning, but yes, I probably need to practice that more. But thank you. Yes. Yeah. Got it. Awesome. Any other feedback? I was just wondering, like, in what situation would you go into all of that? So if you're going to meet with somebody, like let's just say you're going for a client meeting, you probably will share your value. If like so that's pretty much the most common. If you want to post something on your a video on your Facebook, marketing yourself, I would put that. I wouldn't necessarily just go up to somebody and go, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. but you can use that as like, hey, what do you do? So not like elevator pitch? Kind yeah. of, yeah. That's a little longer, probably. The elevator pitch is supposed to be like shorter than that. Yeah, like, yeah. 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 Are you confused on how long the elevator pitch is? Yeah. So this is more like when someone says, tell me about yourself. Tell me about yourself. That's a good one. Yes. Like you're speed dating or something or a networking room and yeah. everyone's like, <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Well, so yeah. Professional or anything, or yeah. Or yes. Great. Yes. Like, tell me. Yeah. Tell me more about yourself. So you can't like. Obviously, I didn't just say what I do, but I also say what my passions are. Right. So, mm -hmm. which feeds into why I love the beach. I think you were more confident at the end. Number one, because you got your nerves out, but two, it was like the passion piece. Like you were like really confident in that. Like obviously, you're confident in your business, but I think just being like. This is who I am. It just flowed better. Okay. So, like, what Kim said, bringing that in, being to passionate the about your business because you are, you know. But obviously, nerves play a huge part of that. And then on her point, as someone who's new to San Diego, I appreciated yeah. PV and coastline and blah 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 because I'm like, San Diego's huge. So if you just say I'm a realtor, so I guess it depends who you're talking to. But right. for me. I liked that you pointed it out because then I can picture the actual like neighborhood. Okay. Yeah, because my focus is the coastal and, and close to surrounding areas. It's yeah. not to say that we don't go to like East County or Chula sure. Vista or whatever. We do when we've done it, but that's my passion is sure. selling the dream of living by the beach. I wonder if she said it. So I wonder if you squished it and yeah. your passions first. And then you can say, so that's yeah. And I did, honestly, I had it written down, but I missed it. Yeah. <laughs> I had it, okay. I had it, but I skipped, I missed it. My passion at the beginning was, I'll tell you what I wrote, okay? And I have to practice. Okay? Okay. Yes, so, yes. So let me tell you what I actually wrote and I kind of loved it, okay? I said, I work with buyers and sellers in the coastal and surrounding areas of San Diego who are, who are looking to live the dream of home ownership in one of the best vacation spots in the country. And that's the truth. It's like, we live the dream living here in San Diego. At least I do live in my beach. So that's what I'm passionate about mm -hmm. is telling people like, this is why you should live here and not move to, no offense, Texas. So. <laughs> <laughs> any, any other feedback? Okay. Oh, yes, yes. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> Like it's important for people to know, feel guilty. Like I don't know who's going to be. I don't know who I know. Wants to. So I think it's good 
to be specific what the area that you're selling in is super valuable. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Anything else? Well done. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I didn't yeah. that booty bowl. <laughs> Well, you know what? I have to do it out there first because I want you guys to do this and I want us to be able to be vulnerable and share it with each other because that's how we're going to grow, right? Yeah. So, and if you want people to, if you want to sell people on who you are and why they should say work with you, but I guess, yeah, work with you. You need to give them your value and you need to show what's so unique, what's unique about you. Why do you love what you do? And saying it out loud is a good reminder for you when you don't want to get up and do things why you're in this because i have something on my wall like what's my why because there's some there's tedious work that i don't like to do like there's times where it's like i just want to go back to being a person because that's just easy but i you know but then i'm like i'm not growing our legacy this is what i love i love helping people i love growing a legacy for our family and you know it's un there's you know uncapped potential Whereas when I work for somebody else, I go and I clock in, clock out, and I get a paycheck and I go home, yeah. you know? And nursing is not what it used to be, especially right now in the medical field. I lost my joy for it. I did. I have you lost your passion. I lost my passion. I was just going and doing what I got to do and go home. So I had to find a reason to do this because there's sometimes I, it's really, I work long hours doing this, so. Okay, so that's it, you guys. That thank you. Part two. Huh? <laughs> that was like a part two, like so good. <laughs> well, thank you. well, thank you guys. If you guys want to stick around, I always leave time at the end. If there's anything you want to pray for, anything, any special needs, like we're here. Um, thank you guys for coming. I'll be reaching out to you guys for some feedback. Please fill out the questionnaire if you didn't and send it back to me. Like I said, it really helps me make sure I bring the right kind of content and speakers. So that way you get some good value out of coming to these meetings. And the next one will be on March 22nd. All right, so it's usually the fourth Monday of the month is the plan for now. All right, okay, thank you guys. Oh. Hey, thank bye, you. Ladies. Yeah, bye Monica, thank you. Good to meet you Candace and Hope. And hello Naomi. <laughs>